Hello everyone and welcome to another Everton show. We're nearly there, aren't we? It's nearly time for the big Premier League kickoff, and what a start for the Blues. Tottenham Hotspur at Goodison Park this weekend. Alongside me this week to assess our opening game and to review what's been a rather busy week at Everton Football Club is Ian Snowden. First game of the season, Snods. Can't beat it, can you? No, whether you're a fan or whether you're a player, uh, the expectation level on that opening day, Daz, is fantastic. And uh, as a player, I usually couldn't wait for it. We can't wait, Everton against Tottenham. Plenty more to come from Snods in this week's Everton show. And as always, we'll go behind the scenes and under the skin of the football club. Um, obviously, it's a great club. Um, you know, unbelievable manager, a world, you know, world legend in football. And I think they're going in the right direction. It's something that I wanted to be a part of. Were you the best centre forward at the club when you were 16? It's a good chance I was, like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, I probably would have said that because I was cocky, but I wouldn't. Uh, you know, I would have probably said it tongue in cheek. No, first of all, it's nice, you know, to to start at a bit of home game with the fans behind us, and you know, it's a tough game, the first game, and so hopefully we get a good result on, uh, on Saturday. There's no friends on the pitch, right? <laughs> so that go out the window, but. Um, like I said, it'd be good to, good to see him, but like I said, when it comes to the whistle goals, as like I said, there's no friends in. Well, Ashley Williams arrived at Everton with a genuine Premier League pedigree. He didn't have a bad summer either, did he? Leading Wales to the penultimate stage of the European Championships. We're all glad to have him, and Ashley Williams is glad to be here. It's good, obviously. It's been a, it's been a bit of a whirlwind day, um, but I'm happy now that I've signed and uh, looking forward to it. You say whirlwind day, what have the last few hours been like? I uh, just just seen around the place, doing my medical and and all that goes with with signing for a new club. So, yeah, happy to have signed now. Uh, what made you excited to join Everton? Um, obviously, it's a great club. Um, you know, unbelievable manager, a world a world legend in football, and I think they're going in the right direction. It's something that I wanted to be a part of. Uh, as you say before, uh, not a bad centre half himself. Are you looking forward to learning from him? Yeah, definitely. He's been one of the greatest centre halves to ever play the game. <clears throat> um, so you know, I look forward to, to to learning from him and seeing what he can he can teach me. Really, you played at Goodison Park six times as a Swansea player. How much are you looking forward to that being your new home and meeting your new fans? Yeah, definitely. I can't wait to get out there. I've always enjoyed enjoyed playing on that pitch. Um, so it'd be nice to be an Everton player and you know get out there and, and and see what see what it's all about when you when you're the home team. What are your thoughts of Goodison Park, when you think of your past trips to Goodison? Uh, well, I've scored, and I don't score many goals. I've scored there. Um, but it's always you know, a noisy place, a, a crowd that gets behind the team, um, and it's a difficult place to play as an, an, an away player. What can those same fans, what can they expect from Ashley Williams? Uh, just an, an honest player, to be honest. You know, I think um, you know, hard working, trying to do as good as I can for my teammates in the club. Uh, and the fans, um, you know, not always perfect, but you know, always with with the right intentions, and you know, trying to leave it all out there on the pitch. Obviously, you went a very long way in in Euro 2016. Are you feeling fit and ready to to go into the team if you're called upon? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, the Euros were great, and then coming back, um, it's it's a bit better really because you don't have to. You know, it wasn't such a long time ago since you was training. So, yeah, you know, whenever. Um, as I say, I got to speak to the to the gaffer and see. I don't know what his plans are, but um, whenever I'm called upon, of course, you know, I'll, I'll be ready to try and step up. How much do you know of some of the lads who are already here? Um, just from playing against them, really, for for you know the last few years. Um, you're obviously, when when you play against this, you know players a certain amount of times, you you kind of have a, you know, you kind of know each other a little bit, I suppose. Um, so no, I I don't know any of them I don't think too well yet um, you know I'm looking forward to, to getting in the dressing room and meeting them um, joining in with the banter and stuff and um, you know I think you know on the pitch a you know, really talented group of players and uh, as I say just looking to try and help them as much as I can with what I can bring and you know hopefully they can help me too. Looking immediately at your position playing with the likes of Phil Jagielka, Leighton Bain, Seamus Coleman looking forward to, to that challenge of Integrating yourself into that defence. Yeah, definitely. You know, I've been at Swansea for a long time, and uh, you know, it'll, be, it'll probably be all new to me to come into a different defence. But it's something I'm looking forward to. Uh, they're great players with a lot of experience, so I'm sure they can help me. And uh, you know, I'll be all ears from from that point of view. And you know, whatever I can do to try and fit in the team and help, I'll do it. Is that something that excited you? The new challenge. 
Yeah, definitely. You know, I think uh, I've had eight great years at Swansea. Um, but, you know, just for me, um, the new challenge um, was something that I felt like I needed. Um, th there's a new manager here, you know, a really good manager that, I, you know, um, I look up to. And, you know, I was obviously, you know, very happy to, to come along and get on board straight away. You mentioned the, the Euros before, what with that and, and now this move, it's not been a bad summer for you, has it? <clears throat> yeah, it's been busy. Uh, it's one that I didn't really expect, to be honest. Um, but, you know, the Euros was, was brilliant, as I said before, and i uh, got great memories of that. And now looking forward to making some new memories at, uh, at Everton. Well, all through the summer, Ronald Koeman has insisted that he wanted to strengthen his squad. And the building process is definitely well underway now. The boss has been a long-time admirer of Ashley Williams and he's delighted to have secured his man. Yes, very pleased. Uh, of course, we uh, and I knew the situation of John Stones. And our business was uh, to prepare ourselves at uh, the time that we will lose John to City and uh, to get in a good replacement. And I think uh, the, it's a good job to get uh, Ashley Williams in because uh, it's really a strong defender, a good defender with a lot of experience in the Premier League. He had a fantastic Euros and uh, the captain of Swansea and, uh, okay, uh, very happy to, to have Ashley in the team. What do you expect and what can the fans expect from Ashley? No, at least it's, it's, it's that type of player, uh, strong one, defending good, really a uh, big commitment to the team, to the fans, uh, a leader for the team, uh, experienced player uh, and a good defender. Snod's Ashley Williams is an experienced international defender, but he'll still be able to learn from somebody with the pedigree of Ronald Koeman, surely? Without a doubt. Uh, I've said it before that uh, Ronald Koeman was an unbelievable uh, player at international level and club level. Won major honours and uh, if you can't learn off probably one of the best defenders in, in the 80s, then who can you learn off? So, uh, yeah, I'm sure Ashley, even though he's 32, very experienced, played many international games himself, I'm still sure he will learn something from Ronald Koeman. Do you ever stop learning as a player? No, you don't. I don't think you stop learning in life in general. Dad. So as a football player, no, you don't. You're always picking things up. And even the experienced players, Jaggy Elkers, Baines, Williams, etc., they'll still be learning. Certainly from Ronald Koeman, wouldn't mm. we? That's for sure. Well, who better to get an opinion on a current Everton and Wales player than a former Everton and Wales player? Barry Horn has seen a lot of Ashley Williams for both club and country, and as a bona fide Evertonian, he's looking forward to seeing the skipper of the Dragons in action for the Toffees. Let's face it, Everton's been club in Swansea um, at the moment, and they have been for about 125 years. Um, so it's a big move for him. Yeah, and it's, it's, as you say, he's been loyal to Swansea, I suspect he, he maybe could have forced a move through last season, season before. You know, he's been playing incredibly well for a number of years. He didn't, he stayed, he stayed at Swansea and gave a lot back to them. They gave him the opportunity, of course, don't forget, he's come to the leagues with them. But uh, he's more than repaid um, any debt they had to them. And, you know, time maybe test himself with a, with a, slightly, with a club with slightly higher ambitions. What would he bring to the team um, here? Consistency. Um, he's a fabulous, good old-fashioned centre half, if you like. Um, he never misses a game. I think in, I've been watching Swansea for four or five years now. I, I think he's missed less than a dozen games in, in his entire time there. Um, good leader, good talker, um, and as I say, good old-fashioned centre half. He, his priorities defending. Ronald Koeman's added Idrissa Garnage to his Everton squad here. Did you see much of him at Aston Villa last season? I didn't see Villa that much at all live last year, so I'm on television, obviously. Um, and he obviously showed up in some of the games. Um, by all accounts, he is a very, very good player. You've got to bear in mind, Villa really struggled last year. You know, he was playing in a poor team, so I'm sure he'll be looking forward to playing in a team that... Um, that that attacks teams, that, that, that dominates possession and he'll, he'll, he'll enjoy a much better season than he had last year at Villa You know, in terms, of, in terms of the team that he's playing for. In terms of playing that position, just sitting in front of the back four, the holding midfield role, what qualities do you need to be successful there? Um, you need to be a good passer, you need to be able to read the game, um, you need to be able to get about the pitch um, you know, for 90 minutes rather than in fits and bursts, you're on the move constantly. And you need to be a little bit ahead of the game, really. Um, you know, you need to realise if something breaks down, where it's going to break down, or 
alternatively, you know, if there's going to be a chance for a counter attack, where that where the opportunities are going to arise. So those are the main qualities. You need to be able to tackle, of course. Although that uh, that is an art that's uh, that's going out of the game. It's more about blocking and and um, and intercepting now, isn't it? But yeah, I mean, he, he's, he can do all of that. That's it for part one, but don't go too far away because after a short break, we'll be focusing on the Everton under-23 side who have certainly had a couple of weeks to remember, a couple of weeks that have been decorated with solid silver. Welcome back to part two of this week's programme. Now, before we celebrate the under-23s winning some silverware, let's just show you how busy it can be for a new signing. This is Ashley Williams' first day at Finch Farm. Ashley Williams. Don't know why I said it like a robot. <laughs> <laughs> Nil Satis, Nisi Optimum. Right, we've already established that it's been a hectic period for Ashley Williams and for the rest of the first team, but it's also been rather busy for David Unsworth and his under-23 squad. The youngsters have been in two cup finals recently and they won them both. Let's start with the Liverpool Senior Cup final and a 2-1 victory against Prescott Cables. Everton under-23s lifted the Liverpool Senior Cup with a 3-0 win over Prescott Cables in Thursday's final at Valair Park. After triumphing in the Super Cup NI in Northern Ireland last month, Ryan Ledson's early penalty set the Young Blues on their way to their second piece of silverware of pre-season. Courtney Duffus was the man brought down after latching on to Joseph Yarny's measured pass and Ledson stepped up to confidently send the goalkeeper the wrong way. And with no intention of sitting on their promising start, the Toffees doubled their lead on 21 minutes as Harry Charsley's delightful clipped pass found Duffus who squeezed home at the near post. The Blues continued to dominate throughout and sealed victory seven minutes into the second half. After a rare push forward for Prescott Cables, Dow nicked possession and raced into opposition territory before finding Leandro Rodriguez, the Uruguayan coolly chipping the on-rushing goalkeeper to confirm Everton's name on the trophy. celebrations ensued at the final whistle and Unsworth was delighted with what he had seen. I thought it was a great game uh, on a really difficult surface. Uh, the lads came out of the blocks really quick, got an early goal, got a second and uh, I thought the way they applied themselves to, to this game, um, you know, the conditions didn't bother them tonight, they just wanted to win the game and, and, and win another trophy and I'm very proud of them. No better feeling I would imagine Snods than winning the trophy in football. You're right and uh... One of these teams are certainly doing that. It's great when the skipper lifts a trophy, the lads feel that they've they've done something, that they've achieved something, and they certainly have, and they seem to have got a great bond together. Uh, Hunzi's letting them go out and play with freedom as well. He wa also wants them to work extremely hard, but, uh, yeah, it's paying off. There's a lot of good performances so far at the minute. It's not an easy competition to win the Liverpool Senior Cup because you're up against the likes of Prescott Cables and Marine and Bootle and what have you, and these teams want to beat Everton Football Club, don't they? Yeah, the teams like that want to be any professional club uh, because some of them believe that they are good enough uh, to be professional players. They're playing at semi-pro and uh, they want to prove a point to anybody who's watching. So uh, they're really difficult games, they are, but they've conducted themselves very well, our boys. And uh, even the likes of uh, Luke Garber, who's had a good few games in the first team, he's playing at this level and his attitude's been spot on. 
Did you ever play in the Liverpool Senior Cup? I did. I played against Marine once or twice. Uh, got a bit of stick as well, by the <laughs> way, but uh, I could look after myself, get a little bit back. Managers in those days used it as a vehicle to give returning first team players, rehabilitating themselves from injury, a bit of a run out. But as you say, you were, you were a bit of a target, weren't you? Yeah, you were. Uh, you were a bit of a name, first team player. Uh, but no, you used to, you used to get one. I expected it. Well, and why not? It's a game of football. Once that referee blows the whistle, it's dog-eat-dog dog and you look after yourself. <laughs> I'd like to have seen that. From Prescott to the Liverpool Senior Cup final, it was then over to Leyland for the final of the Lancashire Challenge Cup, where Everton once again prevailed. It was a long night, though, before the boys finally overcame Oldham Athletic on penalties. Everton under-23s made it a pre-season treble after a 5-3 penalty shootout win over Oldham Athletic in the Lancashire Senior Cup final on Wednesday. David Unsworth's side got off to the ideal start on a rainy evening at the county ground when they were ordered a penalty after Courtney Duffus was fouled inside the area on 12 minutes. Just as he had done in the Liverpool Senior Cup six days earlier, Ryan Ledson stepped up to send the goalkeeper the wrong way and fired the Young Blues into an early lead. The advantage would only last 10 minutes though, as Luke Garbutt's glancing header ended up in the back of his own net following a dangerous in-swinging free kick by Callum Martins. The Latics then took the lead seven minutes before the interval. Jake Cassidy nicked possession on the byline before beating a defender and thumping past Matthias Schuelt. Everton looked brighter in the second period and the equaliser eventually came six minutes from time when Garbutt's mishit low shot was turned in by Tom Davis. Penalties followed and after Ledson, Jones, Walsh and Henen confidently converted, Garbutt atoned for his earlier mistake by converting the decisive spot kick to clinch the trophy. Some good penalties there, Snobs. Some great penalties, weren't they? <laughs> Especially, I think it was Gethin Jones has mm. struck it magnificently into the top corner. But uh, yeah, cool finish from... Luke to uh, eventually get the trophy. What about young David Hanen? He's a bit of a character. Mm. The little Penenka chip for his goal, for his penalty. Fantastic. No matter what level, I won't even try that on a training pitch. <laughs> Mind in a competitive game, I really wouldn't. So uh, it takes a lot of uh, lot of nerve, and uh, he executed it perfectly. We love looking at these pictures of the boys with a trophy, all celebrating mm. together. What will that do for team spirit ahead of a new season? I think David Unsworth's got it perfect. Even in training, you can see him, the wanting to go training, the wanting to play games, the, the going with a smile on the face. And when you've got that in the dressing room, you can't wait to get up in the morning and get to work. They want to play for David Unsworth, don't they? Mm. And uh, Unsworth is a great lad. And we all know that. And uh, he did fantastic on that last game against Norwich as well. So uh, he's doing a great job at, uh, at Evan these Dave. They're certainly on the right lines this season, that's for sure. Well, regardless of what level you operate at and regardless of the quality of the opposition, there's no better feeling than ending a game of football with a winning presentation ceremony. David Unsworth couldn't be happier that his young players are developing a winning habit and a real taste for silver. Great second half performance. We were poor first half, not like us. We were slow um, out of the traps um, and we never really got to grips of the way we wanted to play. Um, changed it around second half, uh, a couple of substitutions, changed the course of the game and uh, got what we deserved, you know, got it back because, you know, maybe could have gone on and won it in, in normal time. But then showed great composure winning a penalty shootout, so I'm delighted with that as well. A great team performance, but Liam Walsh came on in the second half there and really made things tick. How impressed it, were you with him? He was the difference. He really was. He got us playing. We played a different formation. Um, he got on the ball. He got us pressing. He got us playing forward. And we, you know, Liam is a quality footballer. Uh, he's a quality young footballer, and uh, his time will come. And uh, but yeah, he changed the game for us. Nearly scored with a world-class effort at the end there as well. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a smashing talent. Um, still a long way to go. Still a lot to learn. But um, delighted with him tonight. Kieran Dowell and Tom Davis, including the starting lineup tonight. Obviously, seven or eight others have been involved with the first team over the course of pre-season. How how high is their confidence at the minute? Yeah, I mean they need minutes. You know, they've, they've, the, our, our boys have probably played four or five games in total. I think Tom and, and Kieran are, are nowhere near that level. Uh, so they need minutes, they need games. Um, and, we, you know, we say it all the time, we can do as much fitness work as we want. It's no substitute for playing football matches. And especially a, a competitive game like that tonight, uh, it was good. So um, a few more training sessions, hopefully another couple of games and they'll be up to speed. 
Spurs next weekend and the competitive action gets underway. How much looking forward to that one? Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's I mean the the preseason has been really good. You know, we've been in finals and and that's given us an edge really to the to the games. But um, when the ball rolls for real next week, we're um, you know we're really looking forward to it. And uh, you know, it's a great great test for us. Um, we we got a hammering down there last year at the start of the season. So um, we owe them one really. And uh, but Tottenham are a good team. They've got some really really good young footballers uh, and some good coaches there as well. I know them very well. So it's uh, it's a, a, a tough game, a great game, and it's a great game to, to start the season off and go go and win down there. Stodds, we've said time and time again, the main remit for the coaches at Finch Farm, Unzi included, is to develop players and provide players for the first team, but they do need that winning habit, don't they? Yeah, the winning mentality at a football club is great. Even, I know it's wrong to say, when young kids are going in, 10, 11, 12, it's all about the development and making them a team player and stuff like that. But at the end of the day as well, it's always nice when them under 10s, 11s, 12s win trophies mm -hmm. because the smile on their faces when they are lifting a trophy is fantastic. Even when you get to first team level, that smile don't go on your face when you're picking a trophy up. Sometimes you have to win ugly as well, don't you? And you have to learn to win ugly. I suppose it's an art in itself, not playing well but still getting the right result. Yeah, it is. It's, it's difficult. You can't play well all the time. Everybody, you've got to accept that. Uh, the fans have got to accept it. You can't be at your best, 100% at your best, at week in and week out. It doesn't work like that. But if you can grind a result out when probably six or seven of your players are not on top form, but you can still grind a result out, that's when you know you've got a good team together. David Unsworth said there that Liam Walsh came on and changed the game and that was music to your ears. I like little Walsh here, I like the way he plays, I like the way he accepts the ball. He also likes a little dig, he can put his <laughs> foot in there but uh, yeah, he keeps the ball moving all the time and he accepts it anywhere on, on the park. In his midfield role he's always looking to look forward as well so uh, it didn't surprise me when Undy, say, Undy said he changed the game a little bit. You've seen his pals progress through to the first team, Walsh will be hoping that this season he does the same. Yeah, I know people will have a look at his physique and his height. Don't matter. Look at Messi. Mm -hmm. Look how, how, how small he was and how small he is. And he's an unbelievable player. Little Walsh can play, believe me. It's another remember the name, isn't it? Liam Walsh. And by the way, this is the first time that Everton have held both the Liverpool Senior Cup and the Lancashire Challenge Cup at the same time since 1940. There you go. And that brings us to the end of part two. After the break, we've got a big interview segment with a bit of a twist. I sat down at Finch Farm last week with Franny Jeffers, Michael Ball and Keith Southern and we had a good old chin wag about their days as Everton youth team players. Welcome back to our big interview section of the Everton Show. And as I said before the break, we've got something a little bit different for you this week. We've not got one, but three big interview guests. They are Franny Jeffers, Michael Ball and Keith Southern, three players who had fine professional careers and three men who first met as teenagers as part of the Everton youth setup. We sat down at Finch Farm and had a chat about the good old days. This is our very first Around the Table session. We're in one of the classrooms here at Finch Farm and I'm delighted to be joined by three former academy recruits, Keith Southern, Franny Jeffers and Michael Ball. We'll start with you Keith, there was a, a bit of a night out in the city centre not long ago themed the class of 98 where quite a few of you from that era got back together again, what was all that about? Yeah I mean a few of the lads uh, just decided to start a WhatsApp group and uh, try and get everybody involved from that era, I think um, 97, 98, 99, around that time anyway and called it the class of 98. Just Jeff all getting busy again I think. Uh, <laughs> see a lot of that because I'm around here all, every day, most days with him, working with him a lot. He's just busy, isn't he? To be honest, I couldn't, I, I had no interest in going to see the lads. <laughs> no, I'm only joking, it was, a, it was a great day, you know, honestly, really it was. It was, a, it was an emotional day. To see all the lads, it was, you know, a few hugs and kisses and then five minutes later, the banter started and away we went. Yeah, it was good to sort of see everyone and, you know, lying on the couch not doing anything and, your phone's going and there's 300 messages, 400 messages and you think I need to pick it up now. And it's all the lads just giving each other banter and um, as you said, Jebo being busy made the date and a lot of lads um, come from far and wide to make sure they were there and as Fanny said then the, the banter kicked in straight away. It was, uh, it was back in 1997. So a few people made quite an effort to get there. They did, yeah, my little Paddy Drew. He didn't say on the message that he wasn't, uh, wasn't going to be be there and 
he just sort of turned up an hour late with a wig on and moustache, stood in the middle of us and then took it off and surprised everyone. So that was uh, <laughs> that was great and, and Ray O was there and Mike Dicko. Uh, so it was a uh, it was good banter from the start. No, it was it was good to see Ray to be honest. I mean, before I invited them I had a, sent a little message out to the lads just saying, Listen, you know, would you mind if I invited Ray? And then I said to him, Look, he's gonna behave yourselves. <laughs> I thought you were messing when you said <laughs> yeah, yeah. I went inviting yeah. Mike Dickinson and Ray. I thought you were messing. You don't like. want to teach you there, do you? Normally, <laughs> but it was uh, obviously because Ray's been, you know, oh, basically, basically got us all signing for Everton. So he was uh, a major part of all of us for our yeah. careers. So it was uh, it was nice of Franny to sort of ask the lads and I think to fair the lads stuck by him. So yeah. yeah, bring him down. It'd be nice to see to see him. I mean, he was a big part of everyone's life, career, early mm. stages. I think. Uh, Deserves a lot of respect. Probably. He was really yeah. emotional, Ray. Mm. I was talking to him, like, and uh, I think he was so proud of what he put together. You know, you just look back, some of the players involved, like, you know, who gone on to play international football, like Franny played for England, Dunny played for Ireland. You know, there's so many success stories. Even lads that didn't play in Everton's first team went on to have careers elsewhere. So I think he was extremely proud of what he achieved back then. Question for all three of you. I'll start with you, Keith. To play at Goodison Park, in the FA Youth Cup as a young player must have been a terrific experience. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I wasn't fortunate enough to do what the Bawley and Fran didn't play in the first team. You know, I found another pathway to make a career. But, you know, I, I, I scored a goal in, the, uh, I think it was the quarter final against Sheffield Wednesday at Goodison. It was a header, you know, and I still remember it to this day. So it was still a highlight of my career, you know, and I came back to Everton with Blackpool years later and played there and still one of my favourite stadiums. So yeah, immensely proud. Goodison's historical ground and I loved every minute of my time at Everton. For me, big Evertonian. Uh, sat on the Gladys Street. Even when when I was a youth team player, never gave me season ticket up till till I became a regular in the first team. Uh, so for me it was it was everything I dreamt about. Uh, you know, right from, from when I can remember growing up, all I wanted to do was play for Everton and do what I'd watched all my idols do, you know. And, uh, my first season ticket I got was directly behind the, the away dugout, uh, you know, because I was uh, I was desperate to listen what people were saying, what managers were saying, uh, and as I say, playing at Goodison for me, you know, whether it was for Everton or anyone else, was was a great time because, as I say, I'd sat there most of my life watching. Similar for you, Bowley, wasn't it? It was exactly. Mirror image of Franny, really exact same. It was a season ticket holder all me all my life, and um, you know it's sort of getting to a stage of you know it's going to be part of the the first team squad, and I still have my season ticket. Of, you know coming through as a youth team lad, you you turn up at Goodison at half eleven, twelve o'clock, you warming up at Southall on the bench. Um, my job was to clean the balls after they get after the warm up. I clean the balls, throw them in, get loads of stick off Nev, and then run round. Get me seat with all my mates in the Gladys Street and then get the play stick. You know, I was still a fan. That's at that time screaming and shouting, and then next minute you're walking on the Monday, and your best mates with them again. And um, that just sort of it, it drove me on to be a part of it. You know, and I wanted obviously watch the lads on the, the Gladys Street, but be a part of it on the pitch as a dream come true. It's always something I wanted to do, and um, you know that was that made you more hungry doing it that way. Be perfectly honest, Bowley. Did you think this fellow would end up being a coach? No, <laughs> no, not a chance. No. <laughs> but, uh, but Franny was one of them lads who a lot of the, the coaches all loved his movement, and uh, as me as a as a fullback, it was it's 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 what you look for to sort of make me look good. But balls did put a lot of like I know from Michael Owen when he's coming through um, here with the English setup, he used to watch Franny's movement, but he had it natural. And Michael would have to look at his DVDs, not the other way around. But you normally get Michael got asked to look at Ian Rush's and also Franny's movement, because um, he had that natural ability of how to. Stay on, stay on side, and and get through balls. He was cocky as well, though, wasn't he? He knew his ability. <laughs> we but, were uh, talking before, boy, yeah, weren't we? Yeah. yeah. About Franny. <laughs> I mean, Franny probably won't be able to remember this, but <laughs> remember, like me and Franny, the same age, and we come into um, Belfield first year white, yes, and after about it was about two or three months, we we're in the old gym at Belfield, and uh, it just so happened there was a big dunk there. Les was trying to put a session on, probably, and the lads were laughing at him. <laughs> but there was like Danny Caramatri, Michael Branch, all the slightly older lads than Fran. Big dunk with I think it might have been Mikkel Madar was there as well. And <laughs> Franny's just stood up in front of everyone. You know, I was like really shy, the rest of us, you know, Aussie we didn't say you know boot were goose, but Franny stood up and said, um, 
been looking around here these last few weeks and I'm the best centre four at this club. <laughs> and it was brilliant, you know what I mean? It was it just showed the confidence in him and he went on and played in the first team, I think, a couple of months later when he was still sixteen, but you know, he knew he had ability and he knew what he was gonna do do with it. But you know, I still remember that to this day, it was great. Were you the best centre forward at the club when you were sixteen? It's a good chance I was like that. <laughs> 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 No, I think uh, I probably would have said that because I was cocky, but I wouldn't. Uh, you know, I would have probably said it tongue in cheek. But going back to it, I probably did believe it. Mm -hmm. You know, because you've got to believe in yourself. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, if you don't believe in yourself, who's going to believe in you? Mm. Yeah. You know, I, I was just like that, I, and I genuinely, I mean, the, the standard of players when as when as good then, and we had big dunk, obviously, who's was, was a legend. But then you look at the other strikers and. I used to knock on managers' doors all the time, you know, when I was a young lad and say, listen, I'm better than him. You know, you, you, all you're doing is you, you, you're making a backlog for me. I need to play. I, I'm good enough to play now. And I think, uh, but even then, we, you know, we had, we had good young lads around, you know, Danny Cad, Jevo, myself, uh, you know, we're all, all spoke highly about uh, in the youth teams and in the, and in the reserves. And, I think you know when when obviously we got our opportunity, we showed we were, we were good enough to, to play for Everton. Uh, going back to it, you know I wanted to play. I was desperate to play, I'd, and I knew how close I was then. Uh, and I remember uh, was it Walter who signed Ibrahim Bakayoko? Mm. Yeah. I remember the day the day he signed him, and I thought you know this is this is another one in my way. And I give it a week, and without sounding disrespectful, I knew I was better than him. So I had to go and knock on Walter's door because that was the type of kid I was. And I said, listen, you should pay five million for him. You know, look, I need to know now if, if you're going to give me an opportunity. If you're not, let me go out on loan. Walter chased me out of his office because he couldn't <laughs> believe it. You know what I mean? He couldn't believe how cocky I was. But I was right, you know what I mean? Because I think it was maybe a month or two later, I was in the team and he was out. And, uh, you know, without sounding cocky, I think you, you have to have that belief in yourself, you know? You have to... Uh, you have to let people know that you're, that you're ready and you're desperate to play. I, I say to our lads, you know, in the reserves now, if, if you're not in the team, why aren't you in the team? I always wanted to know that. That was the way I was. Mm. What, what did I have to do to get Ibrahim Bakayoko's place? What did I have to do to get him before Michael Madar? They were the questions I asked the managers, do you know what I mean? Because I wanted to know why they were playing before me. Because for me in football, if you're ready, you're ready. And I think we've seen that with Wayne, didn't we? We've seen it with him. Uh, Aussies was a bit later, but when he when he got in, he was ready. You know, if you feel you're ready, and, and you should go and tell people, or you should at least show them. I mean, telling them, saying it's one thing, but you you, you got to you got to deliver on the pitch, haven't you? And I'd like to think, you know, without sounding cocky, I was doing both at the time, and fortunate for me, I got I got the opportunity. Uh, gentlemen, it's been absolutely fantastic reminiscing about the old days, the good old days, as we say. So Keith Franny, Borley, thanks very much. Thank you, Snods, we know Borley and Franny went on to play for the first team, but I love the story of Keith Southern. Had to go away from Everton to make a career for himself and did exactly that. Was at Blackpool for 10 years and more. Shows what a good attitude he must have had because to get rejected, unfortunately, sorry, I didn't at a young age, but to get rejected and then bounce back shows you've got a great attitude towards football and towards yourself. So it's great that they can go back and then step up again another level, uh, which he certainly did. I know my brother spoke highly of him. I think him and Simon Grayson had him at Huddersfield as well for a short spell and they said his attitude was absolutely first class. The other two, I just love being in the company. Uh, <laughs> great lads. Uh, and the dressing room, there's no other place like it. In, in any work you know, anybody ever does, in a dressing room, if you can't handle the banter, you, you, you might as well get out of the door now because uh, it is it is like nothing else. I'd forgotten what a nuisance Franny was when he was oh, 16. He still is. <laughs> still is. I go up to Finch Farm now, have a bit of dinner, and he's still a nuisance. He just uh, he just moans, and but he's doing ever so well with his coaching. Uh, I've watched him on a couple of occasions. His, his sessions that he put on are really interesting. And as Borley said, his movement as, as a striker were fantastic. Graham Stewart played with him down at uh, Charlton. My yep. brother also had him, and he said... His movement, just watch it. He was a class centre forward, wasn't he? Right, it's time for another short break right now, and when we reconvene for part four, we'll start to look ahead to the big Premier League kickoff.
Welcome back to the fourth and final part of this eve of season Everton show. The countdown is well and truly on and even as we speak the Tottenham players will be in their team hotel somewhere in the Merseyside area preparing to face the Blues. They may even be watching this very programme. I'll tell you what, if you are boys, you're very welcome. As for ourselves, well it's all down to Ronald Koeman of course, but new goalkeeper Martin Stecklenberg could well make his Everton debut tomorrow and if he does, it's something he'd relish, especially as the game is at Goodison Park. No, first of all, it's nice you know, to, to start at a, with a home game with the fans behind us. And, you know, it's a tough game, the first game, and so hopefully we get a good result on, uh, on Saturday. Have you been impressed by the Everton fans so far? Obviously you've seen the away travel we've had at Barnsley and in Germany and throughout pre-season as a whole. Yeah, they told me before that you know, Everton uh, fans are you know, they were always present with a lot of people. And, you know, and then we first went to Barnsley and it was like, whoa. That was a lot, and to be fair, every game we played away, it was you know it was impressive. Yeah, to be fair, so I'm sure you get the uh, the prospects of a sold out Goodison Park is something that excites you then. Yeah, we've been there uh, last season. I was there with Southampton, of course, and uh, you know it's always a tough place to go. We've played also with Fulham last, so hopefully uh, you know with the fans set or back on Saturday, we can take the three points. And then I can just ask you a quick question about working with Patrick as well. Obviously, a coach that. You've not worked with too much yet, but are you enjoying his technique so far? Yeah, I know him You know, before I came here, but I played a couple of times against him and uh, never worked with him. And to be fair, so far it goes very well. He's open, he's straight and, you know, the goalkeepers are fit, so that's the main thing. And looking at your, your personal objectives for this season, what, what have you got in mind? No, first of all, you know, I want to play, uh, play for Everton as a first goalkeeper and, uh, you know, try to get as high as possible with great football and, and attacking football. And my first job mm -hmm. is not to concede goals, so that's, that's my aim for the season. Snod Saturday may well be Martin Stecklenberg's debut for Everton. We don't know, obviously, but he's certainly not short of experience, is he? No, he's not. Um, he's played in the World Cup as well. So, uh, yeah, vast experience. It's competition between him and Joel for the number one spot. And whoever gets it, I'm sure when they run towards the Gladys Street end, whoever it may be in gold, they'll get a great applause from the Evertonians. It'll be a new look Everton back four. We would assume Ashley Williams will be involved. And, of course, no John Stones, who's gone to Manchester City for a massive deal. And we wish him well. Yeah, we do wish him well, except for the couple of times that he'll play against Everton. I uh, don't want to see him play well then, but uh, no, uh, we've got Ashley Williams uh, in there now. Phil Jagielka could be, could not be. Uh, our two full-backs, who I, I think are the best in the league anyway on the day. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a newish back four, but I'm sure one that Ronald will have worked with and uh, hopefully not concede on Saturday. That would be really important. I was just going to say that Ronald Kuma will see the defensive work as the key platform to build a solid season. Yeah, and I think the fans will look towards that. That's because we conceded far too many goals last season. Uh, we were quite open uh, defensively. So I'm sure we will be determined as a team to stop that and not concede many goals, especially at Goodison. An opening day clean sheet, wouldn't that be great? Well, Aaron Lennon is on the threshold of a second full season as an Everton player, and he's been a fan favourite since switching from tomorrow's opponents. Lennon is fully aware that the strength of the current Blues squad means that starting places are hard to come by, but on day one of the new campaign, he'd love a crack at the team that let him go. Yeah, it's good to get pre-season out of the way on the belt and can't wait for the season to start. What's the mood like in the group at the moment? No, it's good, like I said. Um, We've come through a, um, a tough pre-season, but also a good pre-season with a new boss, and um, it's been really good. And like you said, once you get the first few pre-season games out of the way, you're itching to play the first game of the season. Obviously, the players are excited when the fixtures come out as well. Was there a bit of a wry smile on your face when you saw Spurs up first? Yeah, they laugh about it with my dad. It's, just, it's just so funny when you see the first game of the season against Spurs. Um, obviously, being there for so long, um, but uh, looking forward to it. But yeah, you have a little joke about it, but like I say, more importantly, we're looking forward just to the start of the season. We can't wait. It's a different club to the one you left, though. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, pretty much new manager coming. I only worked with him for a little bit, and um, a lot of changes going on at the club. Um, and they're doing well as it's gone. They had a good season last season, but um, and we'll see how they go. Do you still keep an eye on them, and transfers and that kind of thing? Uh, yeah, of course. Um, I've got good friends there, so um, I always look out for them and. Like I said, I'm still in touch with um, a lot of the lads there and like I said, you still always have a look out to see what they're doing and how they're doing and like I said, I've got good friends there so I'm in touch with them.
it'll be obviously nice to see them on Saturday as well, those friends of yours. Yeah, of course. Uh, there's no friends on the pitch, like, <laughs> so that'll go out the window. But um, like I said, it'd be good to good to see them. But like I said, it's, when it comes to the whistle goals, there's, like I said, there's no friends on the pitch. Obviously, the last time we played Spurs, you scored quite a nice goal. I'd imagine that was a nice feeling. Uh, yeah, it was my first goal some goal as well, so um, that was more important. But um, yeah, it's a nice feeling to score. To score at any time is a nice feeling, but like you said, it's just, it don't matter who scores to me, you just want to win the game. Obviously, you'd want a repeat of that on Saturday. You won't mind one, so <laughs> it'd be nice to, but like you said, um, we're hoping to get um, the season underway of uh, three points. Snods, I touched upon it in the introduction to that piece of film. Competition for places at Everton Football Club right now is fierce, isn't it? It is, because Aaron did ever so well uh, last season in some games. He, he was sparkling, really, mm. with his pace, his work rate, his energy to help Seamus Coleman uh, defensively as well. So, uh, yeah, a lot of time for Aaron. He, he works exceptionally hard on a football field. He's desperate to, to play against Tottenham Hotspur. What's it like to play against your former teammates, if you like? I played against foot my former teammates. I've never played against my former teams when I've moved on. Uh, that would be that would be a big disappointment for me because I'd have liked to have gone back to mm. uh, Doncaster, Ellen Road, Goodison Park, but I haven't had the chance. But I played against my team, ex teammates a few times, and uh, yeah, you want to get one over on them. You want to uh, you want to beat them, and then you want to socialise with them afterwards. So yeah, I can understand Aaron wanting to play. Did you kick a few? Oh, all day long. <laughs> I bet you did. <laughs> well, our usual final interview with the manager is not just the last word on this week's Everton show, it's also basically the last word of the summer campaign. Ronald Koeman isn't new to the Premier League, but he's certainly brand new to the Everton dugout, and he's hoping that Saturday afternoon will be an occasion to savour. Yeah, I'm looking forward, because uh, it's sold out. It will be uh, on Saturday a great ambience, atmosphere in the stadium, uh, and OK, it's... Uh, now really seriously uh, stuff and uh, last week was still the friendly and okay you like to win every game but uh, now you play for points you play for uh, for a win and that's uh, and that's really a nice challenge what do you make of our opponents tottenham a tough start for the season because tottenham is really uh, one of the best teams in the premier league uh, second position Last season, uh, really a good football team, play good football. Some good uh, individual qualities in, in the players in front. And uh, a tough one, but uh, OK, uh, you can beat everybody if you have the good tactics, if, if you show the really the spirit and the commitment in the players. And, and we have also some good players. But uh, they don't have really a lot of changes in the team. They did not change the manager. And that's always uh, positive. And just finally, as we sit here on the eve of the, the Premier League campaign, what do you expect from, from this season, from the Premier League and from Everton? Ah, I, I don't say that it will be so unpredictable that it was last season. But uh, you see in all the signings of the big clubs, they, they, they are reacting. And uh, OK, we will see what happened. Uh, that uh, if I am happy on the end of the season, that that means that uh, that Everton has a good season and it's a start. And you know that uh, still you can have a lot of changes in the team. That's that's for every uh, Premier League club. But okay, we start this Saturday, and that's why we are looking forward. It's a tough start to the Premier League season for Everton. Tottenham Hotspur at home snods, but Tottenham won't be looking forward to it either. No, they won't be. Uh, when the fixtures come out, I bet they thought, oh, we could have had an easier start than that. So could we, because I felt last season Tottenham were probably, well, they finished in up there anyway, but I felt that they were unlucky not to win the league. And when they came to Goodison, we got a draw from the game, but I thought, I thought they were far better than us on that day. And I thought they were unlucky not to, uh, to win the game. Should they have won the league? Let's take nothing away from Leicester. Let them enjoy it because they deserve to win the league. They won the league. Everybody kept writing them off. So whether they should have or they shouldn't have, Leicester won the league and let them enjoy it. Harry Kane didn't have the best of summers with England, but he's still a player to watch. Yeah, I hope his form continues just till Saturday as well, uh, what he showed in the Euros, because that weren't the Harry Kane that we know. Uh, he's well capable of scoring goals from anywhere on, 
on the park as well. But they've a lot of good players, exciting players, sharp players. So we're going to have his work cut out. Uh, we need the fans behind us right from the first whistle on Saturday. And uh, I'm sure we'll get it. I'm sure that man there in the picture will uh, hear the goodies and roar come three o'clock on Saturday afternoon. How good are you for Mo Bezic? Oh, absolutely good. I, I've been there. I've had long-term injuries. feel sorry for the lad. Good luck, Mo. Uh, quick recovery. Mo Bezic will be back, that's for sure. And that's it for another Everton show. As it stands, everybody is currently joint top of the Premier League table, all with identical goal differences. There are now only 38 games to go and anything can happen. The only guarantee is that there'll be twists, turns, tears and tantrums. And that's just from me and Snods. The Premier League is back. It's Everton against Tottenham Hotspur at Goodison Park. Saturday afternoon, 3 o'clock. It doesn't get better than that. Thanks for your company and do join us next week.